Hello everyone, it's Dragonap from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another junk journal inspiration video. I'm not going to be making anything. I will share 10 different things that I like to laminate and then create ephemera and embellishments for my journals. And you can also create journal covers and pouches, storage solutions all sorts of things. I just want to mention this. This machine cost me around $20 15 years ago and I still have it and I use it almost daily. It was the best $20 I've spent when it comes to all the tools that I use in crafting. It doesn't have to be top brand that's really expensive, just the basic one. It's all you're ever going to need when it comes to making things for your junk journals using laminating machine. And you can get a decent one for around $20, $25. No need to spend any more than that. To be able to make things with your laminating machine, you need laminating pouches and they come in different sizes and different strength. Again, that's your preference. Try with the least expensive one that you can find and if it's not good enough for you just move up that's what i've been doing i don't advertise for any brand i'm just saying use what you can easily get wherever you live so let's get started when i first got into junk journaling i started using laminating machine for making specimen cards such as these these were made with altered playing cards and coffee filters it's one of my early videos from more than two years ago you might have seen it I really love plants. I love nature and I draw inspiration from it. So I've been collecting flowers, leaves, grasses, pressing them, drying them. And laminating was the next step for me because that I could take a single plant, laminate it and have it like that to be able to view it. I also use some of these specimens as a drawing reference and painting reference for myself because obviously they're not available to me all year round and I love to look at the real thing when I'm painting and drawing not just the photo and I'll just show you some of these examples there's some a flower a leaf that's a seed from an orchid cactus I really love how it looks some grasses love the grasses as well some wildflowers and so on i love these dandelion seeds and sometimes i cut them like this just like a fussy cut and use them in a journal like that or to make charms for example here sometimes i cut them by hand and sometimes i use die cuts and scissors to create a little see-through tag with a flower trapped inside and I really like to include these in my journals there's a little flower just behind it is a little lace flower I think they're really gorgeous decorations when you use them like that with these ones I like to make specimen cards or even tags that one can be used even as a paper clip it's attached to this tag with an eyelet and these are just some of the finished specimen cards i would take this and create a frame for it and then turn that into a ready-made specimen and i really love these that i've created with recycled packaging these are not plants they're actually feathers you can laminate feathers as well and if i knew what the bird was i would add a little label here but i don't know i bought a bag of these feathers in a craft shop and i've been laminating some of them i think it's a really gorgeous idea i could also just cut it out and turn it into a little charm i really like making specimen cards and then i went on to create other things here i've used the full a4 size laminating pouch and i basically covered the whole thing with these dried leaves this was virginia creeper i believe and i love how that looks and i can turn it into a journal cover into a pouch or have it as a placemat i really like that 
now in this example i also used the full size and i laminated the fern and this plant that i don't know what it is and i turned that into like a little cover for a basic notebook this is just some white papers to write notes on here i have a pouch i made a pouch i even added a bit of fabric here and some of these and i can still my small specimens inside i really love laminating plants because it helps me preserve their look the colors and basically i just love watching them now here i have some larger examples look at that maybe for a big journal that's an orchid cactus a sage that one these would be great as belly bands i believe or as pockets in a journal and i'll show you in a second examples of these larger ones in a journal here you go i really like this one okay let's have a look in the journal i have a full flip through of this journal my leaf journal it's all about leaves and i have plenty examples here okay now here is a pocket that i've made with this laminated branch i actually used it to do an eco print and then i laminated it and created that pocket over here i have two of these hazelnut tree leaves as they were changing color over here i have those two oak and i'm not sure this must be a cherry and i love them they were really fragile eaten by insects and by laminating i preserved them another example here chestnut leaf and this one i turned into a belly band this one is a tuck spot this one i turned into a little layered tag another side pocket here with leaves in three different colors i really like them more laminated leaves another pocket on the side this one i turned into a tag that's how you use your laminator to create nature inspired ephemera and embellishments to have a really unique and special journal another thing you can laminate and have great results is original ephemera by original ephemera i mean for example original newspaper clippings photographs book pages magazine pages even money like here and postage stamps and here are some of the examples of the things that i've made with laminated original ephemera my favorite i must say are these little charms or dangles and i think they would be perfect for example here for a traveling journal this one would look good even in a nature journal or butterfly inspired bird inspired traveling again i think they're just gorgeous i use basically just the printed tickets laminated postage stamps and some of the metal charms that i had another thing you can laminate are old photographs that you want to preserve even if they're not yours even if you found them like in this case i found this photo when i bought some postcards it was there i have no idea who these people are but it's a really old photo and i thought i should keep it and maybe use it in one of the journals that were perhaps history inspired then i really like to laminate these bank notes i collected some of these as i was traveling over the years and i think laminating them like this is just kind of really interesting thing to add to your travel journal and in this case this money comes from a country that does not exist anymore so this was a nice way for me to preserve that and have it in one of my journals you know to look at then here i have some book pages and some magazine pages and you know book pages and magazines are kind of really flimsy and if you happen to have a nice image on both sides then the answer for that is to laminate it and it will not be so flimsy and you'll be able to see both sides i think this one would be great for a steampunk journal it came from a computer magazine it's one of those digital arts and i really like it then here this was just like a catalog of some sort but it had these flowers and those flowers in the exactly same spot and when i cut it out I could not decide which one to keep so i decided to keep them both and just have it laminated 
The same applies here to this old book. It had images on both sides, so I decided to keep both. And in this case, this book page was damaged. It was torn. But I was able to restore it by laminating it. Okay. And now we come to these old magazines. Yeah, this was such a lucky find. A few years ago, I went to the flea market and I found these old newspapers from 1952. And they had lots of these ads and little pictures inside. I recently started working on sewing and fashion journal and I found a lot of these that I could use but I actually didn't like touching them because it will give me allergies. I'm not sure whether it was dust or mold. You know sometimes with those old newspapers they just have that something that makes me sneeze all the time. I don't know. And I decided to laminate the parts that I really love. I think they're really gorgeous. And I can make things inside of the journal just like I made them with those nature theme inspired. Turn them into pockets, into belly bands, or just have them loose as cards. And with the smaller ones, I could make little charms in the same way as here. Maybe add some cool fabrics, add another little tag on top. Just like I've done with the postage stamps, I can do the same with these original little ads from these newspapers. Another great love of mine, apart from working and crafting with paper, is working with fabric. And several years ago, I have been really into fabric collages. And then one day I just wasn't really into mood to do that and I decided to just laminate this fabric collage instead of stitching all over it. Wouldn't that be a nice journal cover? And this is a small one that I've done. I was about to do the slow stitch and I thought, why don't I just laminate it? Over here, I've decided to laminate some of these really thin laces and they would make a really nice bookmarks. Or if you want to make something for your journal, you can turn them into side pockets or regular pockets or belly bands. Okay, so you can laminate lace. And then I had to try with different lace flowers and elements that I had in my stash and I wanted to make these specimen cards and I made that one with that little piece from a doily that's a real doily the small one there's this lace there's that one a butterfly and this one and aren't they really cute so why not have fabric as a specimen card why not I mean, it's art, it's craft, we can do whatever we want. I also tried making some of these bookmarks with just fibers. If you have some nice threads and fibers, you can do that. I would probably turn that one either into a bookmark or into a belly band or side pocket. Then over here, I laminated this fabric. This fabric was really thin and flimsy. I laminated it together with the lace, folded in half, punched holes here and used black wax thread, the one I normally use for binding books, to create this pouch. I think it's really cute and here I cut a little bit more so that it's easier. If it's the same size it's hard to open perhaps and I kind of just cut here. I followed the lace design to cut it. You can use the recycled fabrics from your old clothes or someone you know. It doesn't have to be new. In this case, this was my old blouse. And over here, I have also laminated fabric, but you see on this side, it's still fabric. On that side is that plastic from the laminator. And I've done that by laminating two fabrics at the same time. I would place them like this together into one of these sleeves. And then when you cut the edges, they actually separate, okay? And then you have the fabric here, but you have the plastic on this side. I've done a few of these. I think I wanted to make journal covers with these. I wanted to use them on the journal covers, okay? And have them like waterproof or something, so resistant to stains. Why not? I could also turn them into little pouches. They're a little bit softer than this one because this one has plastic on both sides. It's a bit firmer 
and these are a little bit softer they're only plastic on the outside and the fabric on the inside so you can certainly laminate fabric and make lots of interesting things for your journals another thing i love to laminate is napkins and i've shown you this in one of the other videos but in case you're new to my channel and you haven't seen that video on napkins i'm going to go through it quickly again this is what i've been making with those i made those pouches and they're great as a storage solution i could store my charms tags cards really easy to make you basically separate the top layer of napkin place it in between those laminating sheets and run it through the laminator later on you can add sewing or glue the lace or add these little snap buttons if you had some and i think they are really gorgeous and you can have them all in different designs and colors maybe add a little tag and write down what's inside i think it's great you can also use them for happy mail why not i love these i also like to make these for the cups and glasses and these are also great to include in your journals maybe if you're sending someone a happy mail you can send them a couple of those and maybe a tea bag or something i think that's nice why not in this case this was the original napkin from a hotel that i kept it even has a coffee stain and then i decided i'm going to laminate it to preserve it it is a napkin but it's also original ephemera you can also make charms with those laminated napkins especially if they have little cute designs like these flowers here over here it's a butterfly and over here again it's a small butterfly with a flower another one with a flower again with a butterfly oops and i just layered them with another little mini tag i think they're gorgeous little charms and decorations for the journal you can also make specimen cards with napkins if you happen to have napkins like these with butterflies once you laminate the napkin it becomes really see-through you can see the design on both sides and over here i tried with these roses really cute over here i used these strips i had leftover pieces of that napkin and i made like a little notepad to write things in you can make these larger or smaller it's the same thing as this but just on a much smaller scale and without stitching the sides so you can certainly turn these into journals just don't do the stitching instead just include papers and do that over here i have this bunny i think i've shown this example in that other video that i mentioned but i'm going to show it again it's over here i turn that into a pocket okay see it fits a tag or a paper whatever you want to put there and i used just some double-sided tape to glue it onto the paper my preference would be to do the sewing but because the journal was already bound i didn't have the option of sewing so i just glued it to the page and depending on what sort of napkins you have you can laminate and cut those elements or pictures and create belly bands pockets side tucks and other elements for your journal and over here i want to show you this in this example i separated the plies napkins come in two or three plies and usually the top ply is the one with the best print then you have the ghost print and then if it has three layers it, you have the white part and i basically took the top part and laminated it and you can still see it on this side and that was it but in this example i did not separate the plies i basically put the whole napkin in between those sheets and then later on i cut on one side i was able to separate those and there was one more ply left inside that it just came up on its own so now i have just one layer of plastic on this side and i have the napkin on that so it feels like paper it doesn't feel like plastic and i have this which is white now that this napkin is adhered to this side 
to this plastic, I can run it through the printer or stamp on it and do other fun things. And these would be great to make little pockets because they're not too tough or too plasticky. They're just enough thickness, almost like just paper, but not as thin as napkins. So you can definitely laminate your napkins. Apart from napkins, you can laminate vellum or tracing paper. In this example, I printed this image of a map on tracing paper and then I laminated it. I think I was planning to make a journal cover, a traveling journal cover with this one. It's really great. I love the image and I love the fact that it's see-through. So whatever I put inside, it's going to be visible on the outside as well. Over here, I printed these black and white images on tracing paper. And I love the fact that the images become visible on the other side. I just print on one side, laminate, and then it becomes see-through. These were for my nautical journals. I did the same here. I printed on tracing paper with inkjet color printer and the images became see-through. And then I just turned them into little specimen cards. I think I was planning to do some specimens here. These were just mushroom images printed again with color inkjet printer on tracing paper. As soon as you laminate, it becomes totally see-through. My latest creation, I'm working on my sewing journal. I wanted to have something a summary, little see-through summer dresses, perfect for my sewing journal. Got a gift from a friend, which was a a paper pad full of these vellum papers that were printed on these beautiful designs and i think they were perfect for these dresses so, so i cut them with scissors and then i laminated the dresses and then i used just scissors to cut around and added these charms i think they're gonna look gorgeous in those sewing journals fun things you can do with laminator and vellum or tracing paper i also like to laminate digital papers. I want to show you these. These are faux specimen cards. When I say faux, this is not a leaf. It's a printable of a leaf that was put together to look like a real leaf and then laminated. And I started doing this firstly because of people who really like the look of specimens like these but did not have a chance to collect some and dry some. So I created these digital kits with that in mind so that anyone can have that look without going through the trouble of collecting and pressing and all of that that's required to create real specimen leaves. And when I've done that video on creating specimen cards from altered playing cards, in that video I also shown you how you can make specimen cards with butterflies that were actually printed on both sides but not on vellum they were printed on regular copy paper glued together and then you have the image on both sides i turned these into little charms or dangles four leaves and then these with butterflies there's still a free printable of these butterflies on my website you're welcome to grab it if you haven't already and in that other video, I explain how to actually create this effect. Also, in these two videos, I explain that as well. In case you're new to my channel and you haven't seen it before. Over here, I have an example of my master board. I've done it a couple of years ago. And after a while, things started to lift off. And the quick fix for me was to glue the book pages on the back and laminate. It was actually one big master board, something like this. And I just cut it into a few sections that looked good and created these cards. That's one way of fixing a master board. If you haven't glued it properly, you can still make use of it without adding more glue and gluing things back again. You can just laminate. It's a quick fix. Then over here, I have just regular copy paper that I printed on both sides. I printed my own digital version of this eco print and now I can either turn it into a pouch I could make it like this I could turn it into a journal cover or have it as a placemat if I want to put my cup of tea or coffee and some biscuits without making my working area dirty I could use it like that and over here I have this to show you 
Again, it was a printable, my own design, but I didn't print on both sides. I actually printed two papers. I used two different papers that I put together and then into one of these sheets. So when I laminated, they were glued on the sides, but when I cut across, they separated here. Because they were not glued to each other, they only glued together here. So you can make yourself, again, very quickly, lots of these kind of like envelopes or file folders, I'd say. You could attach some um, tabs, maybe with some glue or with the sewing, have it like a storage solution where you can place things. For example, I could put these specimen cards in one of these. I can put my laminated masterboards in the other one. And I can have lots of these and then put them in a box and have them like that with a little tag here with a note saying what's inside. Nice storage solution, I think. And this here is just an example of little charms that I was making a few years ago where I had a little quote and an image on this side. And then I would punch a hole and turn those into little charms. Sometimes I'd have initials. Sometimes I'd have numbers. That's just something fun that you can do with your digital prints. If you have some small tickets, perhaps. If you don't feel like going through the process of securing the images with varnishes and all of that, you can just laminate them and they're going to stay like that for a while. These are about three or four years old and they're still fine. I have a few examples, I think, in this journal. There's that one with the full leaf and there's this one i turned this one into a paper clip just added some fabric and lace i have a few here again four specimen leaves and i could do the same with these as i've done with the real leaves have them for side pockets for belly bands for large pockets all right so that's how you laminate digital papers even scrapbooking papers any sort of printable designer paper you might have apart from laminating your masterboards whether they're paper or fabric you can laminate your own artwork whether it's small like these or a large one if you have a4 size you can laminate and preserve it that way or if you like to draw little pictures like me just leaves or mushrooms or flowers you can laminate those sign them at the back I've added some words here. I didn't have to, but I wanted to. And I can have them like this in a journal or just make it into a real specimen card with the frame around. Why not? And I've done these with natural dye. So in a way, I'm protecting the dye as well because natural dyes are a little bit unpredictable. They're not like real watercolors. They tend to change color to, to a degree. And over here, I have some of the botanical prints or eco prints I've done with Sizzix. These are with uh, chokeberry leaves, I believe. After I've printed, I think I've painted with some uh, coffee. The back wasn't looking that good. There was just some of the print showing. So I added some dyed cheesecloth, added the word and then laminated. I absolutely love these. I think I should probably start making more of these types of specimen cards with my own artwork. And if you love to draw or paint, why not? You can do so many different things apart from those few that I've shown you. Another useful thing to laminate and to create lovely details for your journals are die cut shapes. Whether you buy some that are already cut or whether you have a Sizzix die cutting machine and you cut them yourself, or even if you have punches in different shapes, you can make those. In this case, I used recycled packaging and I cut out these leaf shapes. So I laminated this whole thing and I can turn it into a pocket or a belly band or a bookmark. And I think it's really cute. In this case, I've been using my paper scraps to cut buttons with Sizzix 
die cutting machine. All these paper scraps were so cute and I didn't want to waste them so I cut them into these button shapes and then I laminated and cut into strips. I will either make pockets or belly bands with these or even bookmarks. Now over here I have this shape and when you try to glue it inside of the page it's a nightmare because you have to apply glue to the back carefully so there's no seeping and it just really annoys me every time so i thought why don't i just laminate it that way i don't have to worry about gluing it and it's a perfect little pocket i'll give you an example inside of the journal like in this one here that's what i've done i used rust dyed paper cut that shape laminated it and turned it into a pocket i just love it no need to glue it it was just so easy then over here i had these little key shapes and i cut them from rust dyed paper and because it's a kind of delicate design it's fragile on its own and i thought if i laminate these they would make a really lovely little charms i use an eyelet to join those two together and it can be used as a paper clip like that over here oh another dress i only made one of these because i struggled with those little beads i had the same paper on the back and on the front and turned that into like a charm okay added these little beads used some jewelry wire and that big jump ring and a little heart shaped charm to be as a necklace this dress is a die cut that i laminated and then cut by hand around it with just scissors and over here i have this die cut shape which is really nice and lovely i love it but again gluing that to a page it always kind of made me uh, so nervous there's always pieces lifting off and i have this jelly print on the back this plain blue here and i basically just laminated that shape to this paper and i think it's really cute i punched it here it looks like a almost like a christmas card or something like that and i have more of these examples in here I have another dress i could turn it into even a specimen card i have this one I could have that as a pocket in a page and maybe have a picture of a fire behind it. These ones, they were cut with really thin paper and I was struggling to use them and I thought I'll just laminate them and then I can use them as a book plate like this. I just want to give you an example here how I used the die cuts to create this charm. Okay, that's a snowflake cut into that shape and turn into a charm i have one more here with that same charm but attached to a tag and a larger one snowflake specimen card so you can make lots of fun things with your die cuts another thing you can laminate is this these are just glitter shakers in different colors so what i did i opened up that sleeve and I just sprinkled some of these to create that effect. And it doesn't glue together completely, but just enough. Again, you can make lots of things with these or even just have them flat like that. I love them. And then I combine that with the die cuts, like what you see here. And I made these little specimens. They are die cut shape of a snowflake with a little bit of this glitter and uh, this one as well with star shaped and here i used the star shape as a mask to apply that and then lifted it off and i think these would be cute little christmas tree decorations as well i just love them and over here again i used the glitter and the star and turn that into a little pocket it would definitely go in a journal as a little pocket you can just either attach it with sewing or with some uh, double-sided tape it would stay so you can definitely laminate glitter just on its own or with shapes and other papers 
And finally, we come to stickers and washi tape. Over here, I laminated some stickers. This was for a Christmas journal last year. I laminated stickers. I bought this in what you would call a dollar store, a big sheet of many different stickers, and I laminated them and turned them into specimen cards. And I really like how they turned out. Another thing you can laminate is washi tape. I had these Christmas trees. I used strips of washi tape and I cut them into a shape of a Christmas tree. Really tiny little Christmas trees. And then I turned them into specimens. I think I have this one here that was left. I decided to turn that into a card. So you can use those in cards. And not just these, any of the specimen cards that I've shown you. This could be a star here. It could be a leaf. It could be a butterfly. You don't have to use it only in your junk journals. You can use those to make cute little cards that you send out to your friends and family. Let's see if I have any more in here. I have these. That's packaging from a box of chocolate and lay it with that laminated Christmas tree that was done with washi tape. I shared everything I could think of when it comes to laminating and making ephemera and embellishments for your journals. I might have forgotten a few things. I might remember them later on. Doesn't really matter. If you think of something else, please leave a comment below. And if there's anything that I've shown you here that you would like me to go into more detail and maybe do a tutorial, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to actually do a tutorial on that subject. Anyway, I hope you have lots of ideas now and I hope you feel inspired to go and create something. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.